live from the Hoboken Historical Museum in beautiful uptown Hoboken, New Jersey. It's Hoboken Talks, a weekly program where we, we talk to people. That's what we do. We listen, we talk, we ask questions, we answer questions. It's Hoboken Talks. My name is Jack Silbert, volunteer here at the Hoboken Historical Museum. This week, I am so honored to welcome to the show Jenny Poo. She's the brand new, get this, director of the Hoboken Public Library. Hasn't been a new director, there we are, in, in 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. And so well, welcome to, to Hoboken. Thank you. Came all the way from Jersey City. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all 1.4 miles. <laughs> and this is excellent. Thank you so much for, for being on the program. Well, uh, we're live, if, if uh, people are uh, watching us, uh, this uh, Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, they're watching either on uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, what else? Al Jazeera, I think. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but also people are able, if you, uh, are, maybe I should say this later because people were tuning in and, oh, you missed the beginning. YouTube, all 35. Four previous uh, episodes of, of Hoboken Talks are, are archived there for your your viewing pleasure. But the beauty of tuning in live is uh, uh, people can make uh, comments, comments and, and questions. We welcome your input. This is, uh, you know, ooh, interactive, you know, uh, and put on your 3D glasses, kids. <laughs> so having some... Uh, but but our our uh, executive producer, our, our technical uh, director, Rand Hoppy, will uh, will be pulling out the the most the the best best comments and and sharing them, and we'll so we'll answer your questions. But uh, enough preamble, Jenny. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, this. Uh, I, oh, oh I, full disclosure, because mm -hmm. I'm kind of a journalist, you know, uh, you know, I am a, uh, I'm on the board of the, the Hoboken Public Library. Yes, but Trustee I, Silbert. But I, ha <laughs> I haven't met, uh, look, there's library, I sometimes Lock. confuse the words library and museum with, uh, <laughs> Library uh, marketing guru director Mark. I, I the pr proper way to say it, Curiali. Curiali, <laughs> but with, uh, with the hand gesture. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Hi, Mark. <laughs> but thanks, thanks for tuning in, uh, Mark. Uh, now, what was I saying? It's something about oh, so I we've seen each other on on uh, Zoom. Mm -hmm. And as a member of, of the, the board of trustees, of course, you've only seen me like in an ascot and, you know, the powdered wig and whatnot. <laughs> so it's a, it's a pleasure to meet you in, in person here. Thank you. Thank you, you for hiring me for full disclosure. Oh, well, trustee know. Hill uh, Silbert, along with our other trustees, uh, came to the conclusion, the best conclusion, hiring me. So thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's funny that, yeah, <laughs> yeah that <laughs> he's kind of my a, boss. I'm your, I'm your boss, and yet I don't receive any remuneration. It's kind of, it's a weird, that's that's the world of, anyway, that's another topic for another day. Jenny, tell us where, I want to, let's start at the beginning. Oh, boy. Uh, Last century? Oh, well, where, where, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, growing, where did you, where did you grow up? Uh, and then and kind of. Early uh, memories of, of you know, books or or, mm -hmm. or going to a, a library mm -hmm. for you know uh, talk talk. Sure. So I was born on the East Coast in Connecticut, Bridgeport, Connecticut. I was born in I was born in I was born in New Haven. Oh, we used to go to New Haven for Chinese Sunday school. 
They used to hold it in a unheated classroom in Yale University. And we would drive up on Sunday. We, uh, the Chinese families, um, this is, I think I was eight or nine, had organized and held these classes. And I have very fond memories of going to New Haven, freezing in that classroom, and then going promptly to a nearby McDonald's that had a play area. But that's my earliest memories of New Haven. Right, right, right. But, but Bridge, yeah, I was born in Bridgeport. We, uh, my parents' first home was in a largely Irish neighborhood, which I'm sure is no longer Irish. And then we moved out to the suburbs. Um, so I moved, I was there from birth till 11, I believe. And then we made the big move. Then we moved overseas. Yeah. Rand, let's see a photo of uh, young, young Jenny. <laughs> Can we see that? Can we pull that up? Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> With my Winnie the Pooh, which everyone grew up. Oh, Pooh, just like Winnie the Pooh. Yes, except shorter. Yep. That's me. I think I was two Aww. <laughs> true story the gerber people came around to my mom to our house and asked my mother if she would be willing to uh i don't know volunteer me but if i would be willing to be a, a model for their formula they, uh, somehow i got scouted a gerber baby a gerber baby yeah. can you imagine <laughs> that would she turned that down she here i am <laughs> Got a life of infamy as a Gerber baby. I was, I said, look how adorable you turned them down. She said, I didn't want the hassle. I didn't know. I think it involved traveling to New York City, and I had a sister on the way. And my mother said, no way. So, you know what? You might have ended up with one of those uh, conservatorships. So, oh, you know, it's yeah. probably <laughs> for the best. maybe for the best <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> So that was my early years in Connecticut. And right, so you're, then you're overseas. Well, before I do that, oh. I, I forgot. Yes, I went overseas. You asked me my earliest memories of reading and books and libraries. And um, one of, I latched onto reading early. In fact, it was at a book fair at school. The first set of books that I tore through was Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little House books. Sure. And I I went to the I remember distinctly going to the library, the public library, and being thrilled that I, I was allowed to borrow the entire set because I was reading them I, I guess too quickly. I just I just consumed them one after the another. Um and I I loved going I, I didn't even care about the summer reading prizes. I, I I just wanted to, I, st I still have that original set because I eventually bought my own set. Right. Uh, and I, I loved the drawings. I still talk about it and I try to get my kids to read it. And it's a different era. And it's certainly there's some problematic areas about the text um, in terms of, you know, Native American representation. But as a kid, I'm saying in that context, it, it's what really got me into reading. I found it, I found the series so in some ways so exotic and foreign you know living in bridgeport connecticut <laughs> right, right. there's the set <laughs> in the wild west and they're you know, making they're storing ice and hay and um harvest time I, I loved it and making ice cream by hand uh yeah so i i i read a lot as a kid i was a, a true bookworm um i kind of escaped into that and my parents valued that and then they were very stingy with allowances, except for when it came to book fair or book money. Right. Yeah. Right. That being said, we were big users of the public library. And I think, <laughs> yes, I know. For last week's guest, ah! Karen Listener, Carrie Pilby author, Karen Listener, says, with, now is she making a pun here? Because it's Jenny Pooh <laughs> with Pooh. Right there on the screen. I am with Pooh. Pooh with Pooh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Touche, listener. <laughs> there is, I think, there is a photo of me um, in the public library. Next photo, please, Ram. <laughs> is Aha. this it? Yes. And this was a very formative experience and how I thought about libraries beyond books, even when I was a kid. So this theater group performed. You can see they're thrilled there in the background with a bunch of kids performing. That's that's my uh, one of my sisters, Mary, in red. 
Uh, yeah. She's next to me. I thought it was the coolest thing. It was my first exposure to live theater in a public library. And then we were allowed to go meet the actors after. I thought I thought there were celebrities. Sure, sure. So I, I to me, the public library was a place to explore different worlds and to be exposed to these kind of opportunities that otherwise I wouldn't have had. So I love this. I, I, I actually went home and the basement and dug up this photo for you because I remember this photo. It. Yeah. I wonder what ever happened to that guitar guy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's got another career. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> what was the, um, I'm, I'm okay. Let's go to a full, let's uh, return to us full screen for a, a, a few minutes. Um, all right. So that was, and then, um, you go to school, yeah. you go to uh, college, but as as with many are of our lives, we go in one direction and yep. then we switch mm. directions. Yes, yes. All right. So yes. tell you tell us about what you what you uh, studied in uh, oh, university boy. level. Oh, so after Connecticut, we had I moved overseas to China, and then oh. we moved that we moved back to the states to Seattle. And I went to University of Washington, Fine school. Home, home of the Huskies. Go Huskies. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a football fan. I'm just full disclosure. I'm sorry. I didn't really go. I didn't go to a single game. Uh, I didn't understand the hysteria. But now I do. I get it. It's a great tradition. It's a great school. Beautiful libraries. Suslow Allen Library. Uh, the the UW benefited, benefited from its, some of its famous grads. Paul Allen. You might have heard of him. Uh, sure, he uh, co-founded a little my, company called my, Microsoft. Microsoft. Yes, yes, and Bill Gates, um, his mother. I mean, I and think... the Experience Hendrix Museum. <laughs> yeah, yes, the EM, EMP. Is that what they still call it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's in Seattle too, and coffee. Uh, yeah. So after um, I majored in American Ethnic Studies, and my first job out of college was working at the Wing Luke Museum, which uh, is now a Smithsonian Institute. It, I believe it's still the only museum dedicated on the experience of Asian Pacific Americans. Okay. Uh, Where's that located? That's in the International District in Seattle. It's Excellent. Fabulous. I encourage anyone to go visit it. I was really fortunate to work with a, a great group of um just really innovative storytellers and community builders and organizers. Back when I went back to Seattle in May, we had a mini reunion with some staff and my former executive director, Ron Chu, who's gone on to a lot of great things. He, he's actually starting his own podcast and he's as, act, as active as ever. So I worked in the museum and then, you know, I was, there was the first tech boom okay. and I um, wanted at perhaps a little faster pace. I I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay a nonprofit, so I jumped with two feet. I went to technology and I worked for a network security firm. It's still around called WatchGuard. Um, so I did. I went straight up into high tech. Is that that Sloman Shield? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, okay. it's a red box. I think All right, it's different. Still red. Different. Okay, okay, okay. I think it's still red. All right. So I went full board to corporate, uh, and it was that was also a fabulous experience. You know, failing fast, failing hard. That's what that high tech. Then I then life, some life changes happened. My father passed, so I went back to China. And like you say, you know, you kind of you. That's a time to pause and think. Well, do I want to continue? working in tech or do i want to do something that will marry my love for tech and something that is a bit more in fact gives more back to the community i i, I kind of didn't want to hawk a product no no offense to, to watch guard but i think my, my path was to go technical product manager or to sales and the great thing about libraries is everything we offer is free for the most part so that's a great sales pitch so i i moved to New York. Um, my mom was in New York after my father, my dad passed. And I, it's funny, it was a, I had about a year between then and grad school and I tried a few things. I, I tried going to culinary school. Okay. Um, here's a fact. Let's hear it. I learned this. The col the kitchen is not a friendly place to short people. 
Did you know that? I, I, it is a true fact. I did not know that. It, <laughs> <laughs> I would not have known that had you worked in the kitchen. <laughs> Ryan, did you did you know that? I, I did not. That is that is weird. <laughs> that is weird wild oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. No, no one no, talks about on the Food Channel or Food Network. And I, when I went to work, I'm oh, when you're in the weeds, no one is going to get that can up high. You either get it or you find something else to do. You have to, it's it's a really challenging environment for the high challenge, and I it was but I'm it was a great period to try different things. So then I tried working in a bakery, and I realized I was too tempted by all the sugar, and there's a lot of sugar that goes sure. into a bakery. And uh, what did I say? Do I explored? I, I walked all over New York, and I said, you know what? I had a friend who was going to libraries information school at the UW, my alma mater, and I okay. said, oh. Let's look at some programs here. I enrolled in Queens College. And very quickly, I realized, you know, I should probably work in a library to see. Being a patron is a different experience than working in a library, as you can appreciate, probably. Right. You to know, be like, on the other side <laughs> of the... Uh... Well, you get to be the boss. You, you get to hire me to run the library, which is great. And that's a different perspective. Yeah, so I, I went I to... I mentioned the, 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 no pay. <laughs> But the honor and glory. <laughs> <laughs> honor and glory. So, so what was the first library job? Uh, the first library jo paid job. I volunteered at NYPL. Uh, my first paid job was working for a company that moved library collections. Okay. It was a family owned okay. company. There are these businesses, they specialize in shifting huge collections. So I worked for a company called Clancy Cullen. I, I'm not sure if they're still called that's a family owned business. They were moving the brand new collection into the central library in the Bronx, NYPL Central Bronx, brand new building right. in the Bronx. I was hired on as a student worker and got promoted the same day when they realized I was in graduate school. <laughs> so I became supervisor of this Motley crew. Uh, you we meant Motley crew? <laughs> like, I meant. Oh, wait. In, wait. In, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> if I was a Gerber baby, I would have met Motley crew. <laughs> another time, another, another life. <laughs> Oh my, if my mom's listening to this, she's like, I can't believe she remembers that story. <laughs> that was it's a all great... part of the grand tapestry of life. The, yes. the misses, you know. The misses, so, the what ifs, the alternate paths. That movie Sliding Doors. I never saw it, but it was something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah, I worked for the moving company, moved the collection, learned about shifting books and and uh and then I um I was really fortunate I got an offer to work for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Rand, do we have a picture of the the door, the front door of that library? Is, is that what we're looking at? We're looking at the Watson Library. It is the central library for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It is one of the world's largest art libraries i think i have a million volumes not including all their digital collections so i was hired as a um a library associate it's a name title for those who come in they're in graduate school and i was really fortunate to be there six years working in all areas of the library from the circulation desk to collection outreach instruction and I was the I was in a unique unique position because I was the liaison between the Department of Asian Art and Watson. So Watson had, being an art library, they had um, extensive special language collections yeah. like Slavic, and German. They had the East Asian languages. So I they had a library. She's still there, um, Ming Shu. She's the museum librarian for that. So I was added to her team, and we grew that team. Ran next next slide, please. I'm gonna stop pointing. This ah, this is, me. <laughs> this is uh, me in the Asian art. So there is a special collection housed within the Department of Asian Art. And you were so you were able to meld 
your earlier experience in yes yeah. yeah oh yes because uh, I was hired in part because I um, know the romanization system that's used in mainland China peeing and I am proficient in reading and writing not fluent don't ask me to write a college essay I'm I'm about middle school proficiency in Chinese so okay it was uh, yeah, but th this is after we had a special event. That's why I'm all dressed up there. My husband took that photo. Hoboken Talks to me doesn't officially start till we get a comment from <laughs> superfan Eric Kammer. How are you? This is an excellent question. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if now is the time to... Um, well, maybe... It'll oh, kinda... I could, this is perfect timing, Eric. But, but Eric asks... Uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, you all can read, but maybe some of you are distracted playing your, your video games and whatnot. <laughs> he says, how have you seen the library change over the years from paper to, to digital? Mm -hmm. And this, cause, uh, you know, I guess if there's an overarching thought, it's, I think some people have, uh, you know, have a very outdated idea of, of what a library is sure. and, and, you know, libraries are are shifting wildly as we go further into the 21st Absolutely. Century. It's a great question. I saw this firsthand. I mean, first of all, I will say libraries have always, <laughs> we're con we've always evolved, we continue to evolve. But when I worked at the Met, I saw this firsthand. We had a card catalog trash day. <laughs> we, when I worked there, we transitioned all of our uh, card catalog entries. We moved that all online. And so all those cards that you would go into the card catalog, that all went online. And so we had this huge party in which I partook. We took large trash bags and just dumped all those cards <laughs> into them. We remember thinking, we're at the Met, we're doing this. And now the card catalogs themselves are those beautiful pieces of uh, furniture, really, that we repurposed for something else. but. Sure. Um, it's, uh, the way people consume information, Eric, I mean, we are transitioning to an all digital society and libraries have had to certainly dedicate more of their collection budget from paper collections to digital. Um, and the, the challenge I would say across the board is there's huge demand for both still, you know, as you know, there's. Paper, people don't realize this, paper is a form of technology. It's the oldest, it's one of the most oldest stable forms of technology. You don't need electricity. You can still use it when it gets wet. It's, you know, we've had paper from thousands of years ago. So um, it's transitioning really, really quickly. But it's interesting, the way people consume information depends on sometimes the content. Um, like children's books are still hugely popular in, pa in paper form, right? But then... We, those, you know, my kids are in the generation, they're doing a lot of their work online. Um, so they have a huge need for both. Um, it's just like, it's yeah. kind of like uh, where like movies set in the future sometimes only show futuristic items yeah. where in any present, it's a mix it of really is. the latest, uh, you know, people with their, I, I remember the, being uh, on the, Path train, I don't know, when the e-readers first started making a, a, a splash. And I thought, that's annoying. I can't see what that person's reading. Ah, it's always kind of cool yeah. to look across and see, you know, yeah. I might get along with that person or, yeah. you know. Um, but, you know, it didn't really take over the world. I think, you know, uh, print books uh, uh, still have a, a strong foothold. There's research that's been done, I believe, that shows the people retain information better when they when they read, they're able to make outlines and highlights um, on paper right. versus digital. Now, I, I, all the companies are working on um, a digital form of paper that won't require charging, at least not for a long time, but we're not there yet. So we, we're, we're gonna be, the libraries will continue to purchase in all formats, certainly a lot more in digital, but definitely a core part of our collections will continue to be print because that's what our patrons need and want. 
Yeah, I know, Eric. Yeah. EK, <laughs> still a paper guy. <laughs> hey, pa I, I still say paper is really. Well, you're stable. not a paper boy. <laughs> is that what you're saying? No. No. <laughs> Which is okay, too. Somebody has to. Yeah. I delivered papers in college. Extra, extra. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough job. <laughs> The Sunday paper, woo! Ooh, yeah, sure. people stole the the comics. Grad school students stole the comics section, and I would get a call. My comics are missing. <laughs> what are you gonna do, man? I'll get another paper. <laughs> Sorry. After the next library, wait. Okay, where this? When was wait? Okay, now we can talk about yeah. either one of those. Oh, things. sure, sure. After working at the Met, um, I, I got well. When I was there, I got married, and I, I started. Congratulations, a thank Relatedly, you. congratulations. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And I wanted to spend some time. I was in a fortunate position to spend some time with my firstborn, who's now, boy, he's going on eleven. So I took, I, I quit the Met and was a kind of a gutsy move. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue in museum libraries. I'm just so naturally curious. There's so many different types of libraries. Uh, so I took a couple of, I would say years off because can I just say parenting, very tough job. Um, I couldn't wait to go back to work. <laughs> Love my children. Um, after that, I, I went into school libraries and I started Back when my second, when my son was born, um, a friend of mine reached out and said, hey, our, our school fundraised for this library, but we don't have any librarian. Right. Would you be interested in coming on as a consultant to build this library? And I said, absolutely. And that got me on the path of working for school libraries. So then I started working in libraries and uh, school libraries in Jersey City. And I think I have some pictures from my last one, which was West Orange High School. I think, I think we just have the one, you know. That's great. You know, yeah, 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 I know. It's kids. only so much time. <laughs> the, this is a uh, slide. It's, it's, it's West well, Orange. What was this event here? So this is our make. This was our makerspace in the high school. Sure. It was a table. We mod podged it. We you can't see behind. We have like five three D printers. Mean, mod -podge? <laughs> it's it's you know it's that glue. That you apply to the material. I really don't get out. Of it's, <laughs> it's a crafting. Okay, it's a crafting so, material. It's clear, okay, but it, okay. it's an adhesive that you apply, and you can make collages like that, like that. Cool. So my fabulous colleague, who just retired, Bev Tyndall, was one of the best librarians out there ever. So creative, and innovative. She turned what it was a really boring table into this awesome piece of artwork. That the kids did and we did a ton of activities here everything from robotics to craft making we made cards for veterans uh we did e ela lessons these are um this group of kids they're brand new to the country they're ela oh, yeah okay. uh, west orange is a really large english language learner population so a lot of our classes we did and we taught relentlessly you see the collection in the back but we taught everyone from ELA to, you know, AP physics right. and 3D printing. I love this lie. I love my the awesome colleagues. It just really opened my eyes to how hard school librarians work, but what a library means. And this was really the heart of the school. When lunchtime hit, <laughs> we had to close every day. We met capacity because we got so many kids coming to the library to study, to game, to hang out, meet their friends, hang out in the makerspace. Uh, it, it was like a little village in the library and I loved it. Fantastic. And at some point you move on from the school to higher ed. I don't know if I gave some photos of the car. Aha, yes, yes, this Look is at that. That, yep. that is Jersey little, City. That what is a beautiful building that is. That it is. really is. This is a it's been renamed to the uh, Gabert Library named after the last president. Okay. The retiring president Glenn Gabert, Dr. Gabert. But so the Hudson County Community Community College. College. Yeah. It's uh, it's and where is it? Where is it? Uh, what are the what intersection are we looking at there? We're looking at Sip and Jones, I believe this is Sip Avenue going down this way. And there's going to be some all these new high rises, one journal square on that. So this faces the path train. All the buses come out of the path terminal, the sure. journal square path terminal. The first thing you see is this beautiful library. And where's that giant weed building? <laughs> you know <laughs> what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's where we're focusing on. Where is that 
that weed building? It's near there. It's but I don't know which. I think it's. I think direction. It's, I think it's closer to the heights. I think it's closer to the heights. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I was not prepared for that question. It's like, it's like by the courthouse. <laughs> so the, that the courthouse is behind the building, okay. towards sort of right. towards that way. Right. Yep. <laughs> I I, I uh, became. Um, I had. And worked. then so yeah. Well, and uh, what was your what was your role here? What did how was it different from what you had previously experienced in this in this school? Like, yeah, I started there as a part time librarian. It's an academic library. But it's unique. It's sort of like a public and academic library. It's open to the community. It serves the community college students, okay. serves alumni. It serves community members. I, after a few years in school libraries, I had the opportunity to apply. Well, I shouldn't say I had. I took the opportunity. There was um, my former dean, Carol. She had left, and they had a interim for a couple of years, and the job posted. And I thought, well, let me try it. I, I, I felt like my well, my diverse experiences would lend itself well to this position. So I became dean of college libraries, which really just means you're like, it's like a library director, but right. an academic speak because oh, you have the dean title. Sure. Oh, this was pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was very exciting. And yeah. you had a, uh, can we see the, the next photo? It was the staff, a big staff. Big yeah. Staff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is some of our. Not everyone came. This is a. We did a staff development outing at Montclair Art Are you? I don't, are no, I. You're not. Maybe you were taking the photo. I was taking the photo. Yeah. Some of our staff. There's. There. A lot of them are still there. There's Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And some of them retired. But it's a great staff, and we. Uh, they staff just like Hoboken. We had a, a branch up in Union City. Um, so okay. and we were open seven days a week. We were, you know, long hours, but it was all about serving our students. Is it, does the, the college also have a, you know, in Union City or was it just the, the library? Oh, standing along? it was a full on campus. Okay. And it was a standalone campus right off the North Bergen light rail station. When okay. you get off that, you, you're, you're going to see the building. And so it's, the campus on Journal Square is dispersed between, you know, the STEM buildings on one side, the student camp, um, the new student centers next to the library. But in Union City, it's all one building. So we have a smaller library there. But uh, yeah, so my job was I, I ran the library, um, managed staff, expanded, going back to super user Eric. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Super user Eric, his, his inquiry, you know, during, I let him through, we led us through the pandemic and we. Oh, that, yeah. That's we, great. Can we go uh, full, full screen again on, on us? Because uh, I wanted to, to talk for at least a couple of minutes about this. Yeah. During your tenure. Bam. Bam. Pandemic. Mm -hmm. Shut. What yep. did that mean in the academic setting and the library sure the library was one of the last departments to close we really wanted to stay open we weren't sure what was going on when we closed overnight we shifted online that said in academic libraries at least you know we we had already been building our online collections quite aggressively because students nowadays, you know, they, they want to get research online rather than going to the library. So we had already had those sure. and it was about pivoting and doing a lot more outreach and working very closely with IT to ensure that our staff and our students had the equipment they needed, helping with laptop distribution, uh, working with our center of online learning to make sure that we could reach our online, our students online. Um, an amazing staff, just like in Hoboken, it, we started offering remote programming, remote to, uh, I wouldn't say tutoring because we're not the tutoring department, but one-on-one -on -one instruction. If you needed help with your paper, yes, it was due in 24 hours. We could, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one remote Zoom session with your own personal librarian to guide you through that. For a lot of students, it's their first time doing any sort of academic writing do right, any sort of right, research, sure. you know? So it, it, what we we pivoted online and then we started to bring services in person, phased in. We came back earlier, I think, than Hoboken because we, we were able to 
limit access to just the college community to begin with. It was a bit more controlled because okay. normally we're open to everyone. Right. Right. And was, I think it was more for contact tracing purposes. But it was, I will say, I give credit to the college. I was in the college's reopening task force, which is still in, they still meet, which had, we have doctors on the panel. It, it, the college president was on that. So the library, we had representation because we are, you know, patron facing, you know, we are the public face. We're oftentimes the first place that students come and the only place, even if they need help with financial aid, they'll go to the library. That's it. Right? It's like a giant information desk. It Go is. Ahead. They'll come right in. They know that our folks are real friendly. You can help them, even though we're not financially a counselors. We'll do what we can to help them. So it was it was challenging, but the good thing I will say was we were it, it um accelerated our digital collection, which expansion, which was already planned. It just it just really wrapped up real fast. Um you know, made us all think real creatively. Um, and I think the I think we're we've been fully back. I, should, I still say we. I'm sorry. The college library had been fully back since the fall. When do we go fully back? It's been the fall semester. Earlier than that. Earlier than that. In the spring. In the in the summer. Um, so it was it was challenging, but I had a lot of support from the college, from the divisions from administration and um and we're able to remain it didn't have to close again at any point never because of it. no okay. no 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 not at all and at some point you're reading the classifieds <laughs> and well there's no okay i i knew because it's a small town i knew that uh, i heard when there word had gone around that the director was going to retire the longtime director i had been watching hoboken library because hoboken library really has been an innovator and leader in public libraries in New Jersey. You know, we were the first to open a maker space. Um, the, the book lockers, I even had heard wind of that. I mean, there was a lot of great things Hoboken was doing. And so when Lena's retirement became known, you know, within the community was, oh, the job post is going to go up and the post, did, the post was made. And I was recommended by a colleague said, hey, I think you'd be really interested in this. This might be a good opportunity. They're renovating their beautiful third floor. They're putting new HVAC. Who wouldn't want to oversee an HVAC project? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I said, oh, absolutely. So I, I, I applied and uh, met you, met you with the board. I was very impressed with the engagement and professionals of the board with the staff and all the exciting things that are happening now and the future of this library. So I applied, you selected me. You, you, you got, got the job. I got the job, here That's I am awesome. on your show. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Take that Gerber baby. <laughs> it was an alternate route to uh, fame and fortune. Let's uh, ran that next photo. I'm gonna keep pointing just cause. <laughs> so now you're, literally making your way i am literally making way from, from jersey city mm -hmm. that, to that, hoboken that's our library's fabulous tote bags adult summer reading prize if you had <laughs> completed some number of pages shout out to rosary for uh, ordering that i love that bag but yeah i i, I bike in i have a great commute I, I can't complain i remember when i first figured out that one could walk or uh, bike between cities along the waterfront and then some years later i realized you can you know uh, it was very late at night one night i realized i oh, really cross a lot of different spots yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the waterfront very nice very to, nice uh, yeah. yeah yeah it's a great commute mm -hmm. uh and uh let's take a and then we you arrive at ah, there you go Hoboken Public Library and our two annexes. Hey, that's my car. There's a ticket. No. <laughs> no. Um, I hope not. <laughs> so this is the uh, the the great library. But for for viewers who don't know, that's at uh, uh, Fifth and Park. Yes. In uh, here in Hoboken, right on uh, Church Church Square Park. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, was was built. I don't know when was it built? Wow, a long time ago. Eighteen. Let me get my note. Eighteen eighty-seven. Eighteen eighteen ninety-seven was completed in eighteen ninety-seven. Mrs. Stevens started it, um, and it, a, a beautiful building and a long history, but you know, has it always been like <laughs> the t like? I think when. Uh, Rand, maybe you can speak to this better, but when I moved here, the library was like, there was like a, just a stack of books and like a guy in a lawn chair. And that was, <laughs> that was it. I think you're <laughs> thinking about a different library. I don't know. <laughs> but then in the past uh, 20 years or so, it has steadily uh, Im improved mm -hmm. to the point where I think we're on the on the precipice of some amazing uh, things, and uh, but you arrive, boom! The pandemic is still still ongoing, mm -hmm. and so what what kind of situation did you you find yourself in? You started uh, when? Give us give us the day you started. Wait, uh, August. Oh, I think it was August 9th. That's a good it was day. a Monday. That's a good day. And that was, I believe, that was the day we reopened after being closed for for four weeks prior in part, I mean, because of the renovation. So the staff had to move the circulation services and we had to shift everything within a month and then move it back <laughs> for my first day. Yeah. And uh, the next slide is, I think we see some of the, you mentioned this bef before, uh, was one of the, uh, uh, you know, COVID era additions to the library these uh, talk about what what we're looking at there this is a really popular service that was launched during the pandemic and that we're fully intending to expand these are lockers 24 7. in fact on my way here i was chatting with the patron who was picking up some things and i asked him well, do you like this and he's oh, i love it. i can come anytime you know sometimes the building's closed i can't access it um, it's really easy. So these are our book lockers and we have one here. We have one in Grand Street and, you know, we would love to install one. And at Grand in Street, for people who don't oh, know, there's a, uh, what, a what's branch. there? At the, at the uh, community multi-service center. Correct. On the second floor, we have a full branch. I think we have a photo of that, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, this is oh. the inside of it. Yep. And then we, you know, you get the plexiglass, which uh, <laughs> that's a COVID era sort of yeah, a new, new normal. Sure, new sure. normal. Mm -hmm. So we have our book lockers out there, and we are looking for partners, perhaps maybe right here near the historical museum, to add one, to you know extend our reach to the community, to go where our folks are. Um, they have been so popular. We are going to add another one. So we definitely would love to add one uptown. In fact, other libraries have reached out to Hoboken asking us how we liked our book lockers and how to implement them. So that's just one of the innovations. There, I have to about. admit, it took me a few tries before I, I, I uh, but you, you know, the, the, there's a little, uh, you know, oh, what do you call scanner? it? What do you call it? The scanner. Eric Cameron is going to help me out here. <laughs> it's, is this innovative book locker idea specific to Hoboken? I can't imagine this was the first place this, that it existed. No, no. In fact, this 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 service had been around for a while, but I I, I think the need um, was just so timely, and I think Hoboken has been one of the most successful libraries in implementing them. The fact that Hoboken's a walking city, I think also helps. There's probably less of an um, urgency to have this maybe in the suburbs. I, I, I can't speak for that. But no, it's not unique to us, but I'll take credit for our expansion and just our success with our lockers. You know, it might be fun and could increase the usage. And you have a random locker and somebody, they scan their card and pops open. There's a sandwich in there. <laughs> something non-perishable and, and your book okay okay the, well then the popularity popularity would skyrocket wouldn't you think because then but then people might ask well what kind of sandwich is this a pb and j oh, yeah. is you, it gluten free you work out the detail <laughs> okay a big idea all right trustee silver got a boss um <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> let's. Uh, uh, oh, thank you, Mark. We were the first New Jersey to implement the book lockers. Yes, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, our marketing Mark, manager. Marketing Mark, they call him. <laughs> and they call him Marketing Mark and the Funky Book Bunch. That's what they call him. It's true. Uh, you talked about renovations. What? Uh, next image, please. No, wait. Oh, this is another. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Another COVID era thing that uh, that seems that very popular will continue. Yes. What are we looking at here? We are looking at our cyber cafe, and there's Amy and Heidi and Shania. Um, it is what it is—an outdoor cafe. You can bring your own laptop. If you don't have a laptop, we can lend you one. The library provides the Wi-Fi service. When the weather is nice, you you know come use one of our tables take a seat i i saw it was full today you can work it's it's with this weather it's beautiful to work outside sure. with good reliable wi-fi and friendly library staff to help you uh, you know with any of your needs really information needs i should say <laughs> and bring bring your own uh warm beverage yeah that's not provided that is not provided not at this time no you know the library has a little cart <laughs> And from a distance, it looks like there's going to be Ben and Jerry's the, ice cream. The book bike. And then you get up to it, and there's no ice cream. I agree. When I first saw that, I thought there was ice cream, too. <laughs> so another, another idea. But the, the Wi-Fi is, is X because you don't have to be sitting at the cyber cafe no. to use the Wi-Fi. You sit on the steps of the library or in across the in the park on a mm -hmm. bench over there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tremendous service for the community. And now there's... Uh, City bikes. The city bikes, <laughs> also very popular. We don't maintain those. <laughs> Full disclosure. But it's nice. It's a nice, if you if you just want a place to work outside, you don't have to be indoors in the cafe, come outside. Visit us at the Cyber Cafe. It's uh, fast, you know, one interesting thing of the, the pandemic uh, that um, which innovations and changes not just at the library, but everywhere will carry on. We're yes. just good ideas, just waiting for an opportunity to uh, yes. blossom. Yes, yes. This is one of those. We're keeping this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I want to do renovation. Nope. Oh. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you these. talked about, because you had your summer reading tote bag, and this is this was your, so tell us about that summer reading program just again, and... Uh, and I guess it'll return next. So every yeah, every will, year. Will there be a winter read? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how things work. Summer reading is what it sounds like to address the summer slide. You know, public libraries we mount a campaign. We give lots of great swag and incentives and prizes to children and adults as evidenced by the fabulous lens and quality tote bag that I now own. <laughs> it really is. It's very, very good quality. Um, and this is our staff member showing off our shirt. It, it, we're just celebrating reading, celeb and we had a great end of summer reading party in the park sure. where we had, I um, participated in a spontaneous jump rope off contest with a couple kids. May I just say it is a dying art. I think we should bring back jump roping. We we should. And there's uh, Lego expert, uh, Mr. Mr. Adam. Adam. Extreme Lego. Yeah. Extreme. Uh, well, Miss Ashley. Ashley, Asha, Sue, Val. Carolyn, Val, yeah, uh, Natasha, uh, Victoria, and of course, Rosary. And I can't see the person behind. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, Steph. Steph. Is that Stephanie? Is that the archivist? I'm not, yeah. I don't. Oh, it's okay. Our archivist. <laughs> Thank you. Fabulous <laughs> archivist. Yeah. So. Some are reading, but right now, I don't know if we're going to talk We have the photo. Right now, we are in the middle of um, library card sign-up month with our new library cards. Did we get that image? I do have the I, card with me. Oh, shoot. It's in my bag. Get get the card because... Okay, I'll let me get the card. Can, I, can you... Okay. Thank you, Rand. All right. This image was sent to me, and it's some like point, four o'clock. At some point, I got to draw the line. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I did say that I could and wait up till the last minute, uh, but, but that's okay. I have. I mentioned I not paid. <laughs> so, <laughs> honor and glory. And you get to boss me around. <laughs> Here we go. Let me keep. 
Look at that. That is it's a little it's a space monkey. What is that? What are we looking? Oh, it's Yoda. Yoda, baby Yoda. He didn't just say space oh, monkey. No. I thought it was a glare, and I thought Sorry, it was a space ba monkey. Baby Yoda, read you. Must. As seen on uh, TV's The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. And that that's awesome. This is the way. <laughs> Wait. So is it is it uh, what is it? Library card sign, sign up, up month. month? Yeah, sure. so, September. But really, library card sign up month is all year round. So come to the library if you'd like to get a new Baby Yoda card. This is the uh, this is this goes on your key. That's your pretty key awesome. Chain. This is. I'm getting some new ones for my kids because we are. So could someone school. trade in their existing card? Yes, and they can. Yes, they can. Come That's on, come cool. on down to the library to get your new. Rand library is going card. into his wallet right now. <laughs> so yeah. that I brought that. Ah, see, yes, yes, you may exchange it. Yes. And do you also have like Job of the Hut? Are there other cards? Can you collect them? Oh, that <laughs> now that would have been a good campaign. I like the way you think, Trusty Silver. Yes, no, it's just Baby Yoda. Well, you wouldn't want to have multiple cards. That would be very confusing. Oh, for Star Wars fans, absolutely. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I think we're up to the renovation I think so. slide. <laughs> Aha, this was just from last week. What's this is uh, <laughs> this is the last slide I dropped in there because that looked cool. What's uh, it is really cool. Was so it? what's going on? What's happening in the the uh, this uh, the third floor? It's the third floor. We are renovating the our beautiful children's room, teen room um, space on the third floor. This is a crane. We had to close the street. It is bringing in um, steel beams to reinforce some of the walls, I mean, some of the ceiling, but it's just it, supplies that we, that we um, we're getting delivery for right. uh, renovation. So I, I thought it was cool, of course, because anytime you get a large crane going through a window, because you obviously you can't bring it through the stairs. It's a pretty cool shot. Yeah. <laughs> so we're making good progress in maybe this is for the HVAC. So where the library has a very old boiler and it um a large part of this renovation is to bring us up to code to have, you know, sufficient heating and cooling in the building. I think that's an admirable <laughs> uh Goal and but in the library, but it has been able to remain uh, open during most of the most of it. Yeah. yeah. Again, a credit to our patrons for being so flexible and understanding, but our staff and these innovative services, taking services outside, having the uh, the lockers, um, having the two annex spaces next door, opening the teen space there, having our branches. Uh, we want. We are here for the community, so we want to stay open as long as we can. And I'm going to give uh, kudos to the the patrons who have uh, you know adjusted and and adapted without too much uh, complaint uh, uh, at Not all. Not all. Thank you for understanding. This is a huge renovation, but the end product is going to be beautiful. At least the third floor. This is just. I think we have another one. shot of the third floor. Mm -hmm. uh, well, or we just look at this for a little longer. Ah, our tin ceilings. So what you're looking yeah. at, this is in the children's room. Uh, those are the original tin ceilings that are peeling off. We are going to have... Now, wait a minute. Tin roof rusted. Yes. Ran, that was for you. <laughs> Ran. Okay. He's chuckling. <laughs> What's but uh, it's uh, 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 can it be saved? What's happening? What's uh, what we're doing is we, it can't be saved. We are working with a well, our general contractor is working with a company that specializes in reproducing a tin ceiling that will, um, I think, will do justice to the historical design of the tin ceiling. Um, but it has to be, we couldn't save it as you can see the condition. Yeah, yeah, the building yeah. is 130 years old, right. so yeah, some things you can save, some things you can't. But we're going to preserve the tin ceilings just with newer tin ceilings. And the hole you see there cut out that's where we're bringing in all the heavy HVAC equipment up through there. So a lot of our heavy equipment will be in the attic space, and that's where old Gus lives. Gus, I. I <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
literal skeletons that we're talking about? You've gotten away with it, too. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Ba uh, let's uh, let the back the uh, big screen, wide screen for us. Let's how are we doing on time? We're doing okay on no, we're, we're getting, oh, we're wow, getting close. close on time. I didn't say all the things um, that Mark wanted me to say yet. <laughs> 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 what I want to we're say. We're interviewing you. We're not interviewing <laughs> the library. You know. Um, how about some 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 key, key points of what's what's happening now? Wait, there is the flyer they, of. We're getting to that. Okay, we're okay, okay, that. okay. That's sort of a on the way out <laughs> okay. kind of a thing. All right. <laughs> because you have a big role in that. I'm just saying, Jack. So what's what's what big programs are going on, and what what big ideas maybe mm. uh, you know we, we could easily uh, have another uh, session just talking about uh, uh, exciting new trends in in, in libraries, but uh, just kind of maybe short shortish term. What sure. what? Is, well, immediately as you saw, we, you know we we're stewards of really of the library, and we want to. I like to use this analogy of camping because I do go camping with my family. You want to leave a place better than where you found it. You want to leave it in better condition, and so by doing these renovations, we're ensuring that the library is going to stay around for a long time. So the media big project right now is the third floor renovation, which is just phase one. Then we want to move down to the the next two floors, which, as you know, that mezzanine level it kind of needs. A lot of um, touch up and just updating and modernizing. We would love we the library um, needs to extend. We need to extend our footprint to make sure we reach all four corners right of Hoboken, and all the wards. Um, so finding more satellite branches, converting the annexes, the the two townhomes of the board you purchased in two thousand nineteen. Uh, to make that a beautiful new space because as it is, we, we don't have enough room to serve all currently 60,000 people in Hoboken, right? right? According right. to the last census. So, you know, our long-term goal is to, is to expand our footprint, find satellite homes, continue to grow in our programming, strengthen our partnership with the municipality, with our schools, with our partners, the historical museum. One thing I will say, you know, we miss having the exhibits on the second floor. You know, that that space right now, we've converted it while under renovations for public use, but we fully intend to, once we're done with that renovation, we'd love to bring the museum, some of those exhibits up for sort of more cross-pollination and, and, you know, to bring that back to the library. Um, sort of, you know, adding more book lockers, uh, our popular book lockers to maybe outside right here, the historical museum or up, you know, in Ward 2. Um, so those are some of the really exciting short-term and long-term goals. Um, I just think, wouldn't it be, Hoboken deserves just a beautiful brand new library. It would be great to have that right next door. So that's sort yeah. of my, right? Yeah. I, I come from Seattle. When you think of Seattle, you think of the Central Library, that beautiful, gorgeous building. I, you know, we have a gorgeous historic building and we can, have a brand new one next door with an auditorium, a maker. Wouldn't that be so fabulous to have free and open to all, right? The library is, we are one of the last remaining public spaces, open access, free and open to all. I think that's it, the waterfront and the library, and that's I, it. You don't have to buy a coffee to sit here for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what else is there, I think. Well, we'll talk about pumpkins and pages. Let's put next. Uh, the next slide because library, sh my, <laughs> this is what it's all about. Come on, come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my husband who grew up in, he, he was, uh, he came to this country when he was two, but he really grew up in Jersey City. Uh, he's a reason why I'm in New Jersey. Can I just say he, I would have. I was a New York girl, and right, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'll go to this place called New Jersey. Let's go check it out. I never left. <laughs> Those are my kids. That's Molly, and that's Kyle, and this is us. We were in Frost Valley a, a few weeks ago. Frost Valley YMCA. And what's the name of that this stuff? <gasps> that's Wolfie, and he's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> The times we have left him in hotel rooms and had to FedEx ship this dog from Ikea. 
I can't tell you. Maybe we should do the historical museum after it's done because that is a very expensive stuff. Talk. But we love Wolfie. That's Wolfie. All right. Now, this is a, a, a big weekend in Hoboken. Huge. It's a huge weekend in Hoboken. Uh, well, tomorrow, people can, uh, Friday, people can go to uh, uh, Central Park in, in Manhattan. I know that's not in Hoboken. But uh, Hoboken's own Yola Tango doing a, a free concert on the summer stage mm -hmm. there. It's a big one. Uh, but then, then the, the next uh, slide, I believe, tells us about the big, look at this, the the Fall Library Festival. Mm -hmm. Pumpkins and Pages. What What's going to, what's happening there? What can people expect if they come to Church Square Park Saturday between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. They can't. Will Harmonica Sunbeam be there? <laughs> I don't know. I don't no? have the full program. Okay. Mark can probably, if you can chime right. in the chat. Right. We have a full roster of programs. We have, well, we have, oh, I'll leave that the best to last. Um, you get to meet me. If you haven't met the new director, our staff will be out. We have author talks. We have uh, book signings. We have a mentalist. We have a mentalist. A mentalist. I, I don't know if they can read your mind and control your mind, but it's all. We have just a whole roast, uh, array of programs. Oh, I think the fire truck is coming too. I think we have. Oh, they, the kids can climb the fire truck, which is Whoa. exciting. And we're we're sharing the temporary park with, tattoos. I hear. Yes, we have. Thank. We have temporary <laughs> tattoos. We have so many things. Uh, just go to our website. You'll you'll see a, a whole uh, schedule of programs. Can um, someone sign up for a library card? While absolutely. The library will be open that day. So they can walk right in, get Absol a book. Get a or book, a, a non-book. A <laughs> we, we, we can run DVDs, stream movies. You can do a lot with a library card. And I will be opening 11 a.m., but our very VIP guest, this guy right here, Mr. Jack Silbert, will be, I hear... Um, Leading a monster story time and a rousing edition of <laughs> well, we'll Monster see. Mash. We'll see. We'll see <laughs> what the interest level is. But yeah, instead of the the normal uh, Sunday story time that I do at the Hoboken uh, Fire Museum with the museum's own Bill Curran, uh, this week doing it as part of Pumpkins and Pages and. Doing it at a, a time that's not nap time. <laughs> Our normal one is right smack in the middle of nap time. <laughs> Kids are, like, yeah. <laughs> this is prime this time. This is pre-nap time. This is prime time. And then, but now speaking of the special guest, and right after me. Uh, well, you're introducing our special guest. Unopposed mayor. <laughs> Just it's the a, facts, Jack. May, Just the facts. It's Mayor Rami Bala. Yes, Mayor Bala. Speaking. And normally it would be like a big, you know, but there's there's no opponent in the race this time. <laughs> he is accompanied by, you know, two mayors of the day, children. So he'll be coming with an entourage. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. That's very, I know, this should be a wonderful, uh, the weather's supposed to be lovely. Weather's nice. Yeah, it's uh, cooperating. Will there be cider? I, don't know. Oh, I wish you know we used to have a popcorn machine apparently but with covid this year we can't really offer food maybe, uh, maybe okay. next year all right we'll no, bring the popcorn sense. machine back that because makes sense. people smell the popcorn with the ice cream in that <laughs> yeah, okay okay i'll tell mark that <laughs> <laughs> um and then on Sunday, October 3rd, I don't think I have a slide for this, but the uh, the return, I'm very excited, the Hoboken Arts and Music Festival. I think the library uh, will, be a, there. will be the there. The friends will be there, too. The friends of the library might be doing a book sale, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't they'll, know. They'll yeah. be selling on Saturday. We will be. I'm, I totally forgot. I'm sorry. We, we have a great used book sale that's run by our friends uh, group. I, I think we might have, we, we have, we share their tent. So I'm not sure if they're selling books, but we'll have a presence there. Say we'll, hi. We'll have a presence. And the museum will have a presence there as well. Where Where's your, uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. Brandon had to. Okay. 421. On Washington. 421 right? Washington. And uh, it'll be a museum uh, t-shirts uh, for sale and uh, 
chat books mm. and uh, oral history chat books and uh, all sorts of swell stuff. Uh, and of course, there's the uh, music. Mu it's an art and music festival. Former Hoboken Talks guest Karen Cool leading the Karen Cool Band. Uh, future Hoboken Talks guest Dave Schram will be accompanying the great Freddie Johnston. Uh, lots, lots of other uh, great stuff. Steve Shelley with the uh, tape hiss and the Smithereens with uh, guest vocalist Marshall Cranshaw. So uh, show up for all of this stuff starting. To uh, Saturday, October two. That's you're turning, turning the calendar page. I know October it keeps going. Um, I think we've reached the end. But the next, uh, we want to thank. We thank you, Jenny. Thank oh, you so much. Oh, thank you. First of all, thanks for agreeing to uh, join us. But then this, this was delightful. He was only my boss, so of course I had to say yes. See, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> See, I do this, no money, and I do that, no money. I need, need a little bit. Little you get bit the mug. Else. You have the mug. Oh, guests of Hoboken Talks get this uh, lovely Hoboken Talks. Ooh, that's where Gus lives in the cave. Lives in the K. <laughs> oh, Gus. Um, but really, th uh, thank you. And uh, I, I only he heard wonder. You know, as, as your boss, I've only heard <laughs> wonderful things. Uh, and your your tenure so far, everyone's uh, just excited for the, the your uh, your stewardship. Thank of the, you of the library. We are just really just stewards, and it's an honor. It's a privilege to serve in that role. It's a privilege really seriously to be here in the Historical Museum with you, Jack. I've really enjoyed our hour and um, find me on bike, find us at the library, find us online, find us in the park. I really want the library to be Wait, everywhere. Did you say you want them to find you on your bike? Yeah, I'll be by bike around okay. town. That's right. how I get around in Hoboken. All right, but you're okay with that if people are like, Jenny! Yeah, that's I'm used to it. Okay. okay. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's easier to stop and park a bike than in a car. You ever run into Batman? I have not. Okay. You got that to look forward to. Batman. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Celebrity. Celebrity. <laughs> You'll know. You'll know when it, when it happens. Okay. okay. All right. So, again, Hoboken Talks. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Eric Kammer. Thank, you know, everybody. Coming up next week i believe uh, uh and i'm not not the host for that one but it's uh, uh pastor elaine ellis thomas is our guest and that that should be uh that should be a real good one uh coming up in a in a i think on october 14th i believe the great guitarist singer songwriter uh, has used the the lyrics. Has used the words of uh, uh, like Dickinson poems uh, to to uh, not just a few of his songs. That's not all he does. But yeah, uh, I love it. Uh, so a, a literary bet there. But Dave Schram, original member of Yola Tango, we've got a lot to talk about with him. Uh, what else? We got to thank. Uh, we had a uh, long time uh, Hoboken resident, uh, Donald Chackett, uh, was, uh, loved Hoboken, loved the museum, and remembered the museum uh, in, in his will. What a, what a wonderful, uh, uh, just a caring thing to do for the, the community. So we, we uh, remember him, we give thanks to, to him and his, his family. Oh, the New Jersey Historical Commission. What a, what a great group of people they are. They were kind enough and, and wise enough to uh, uh, provide us with a, a technological uh, funding, a grant, and uh, to which with these uh, exciting new microphones, one is a USB, one is not a USB. That's just the kind of amazing tech we have. <laughs> and there are these new lights that we have. The lights are nice. Uh, and the, the, with the old microphones, you couldn't you couldn't pound on the desk. That was a bad, but now we can pound on the desk. So that's good. 
And we always thank the applied development company. Did you know that they, they uh, provided this physical space for the museum? And if you haven't been to the museum, it's at uh, 1301 uh, Hudson Street here. And they, they uh, uh, just a dollar a year they rent. They rent. And if you visit, come visit the museum if you haven't in a while. Maybe you've been staying at home a lot during the pandemic, but uh, we're open and it's safe. And the current, uh, the downstairs main exhibit is called The Avenue. It's a history of Washington Street throughout the, you know, the, the long, colorful history of this uh, mile square city. And then upstairs here where we tape we record uh hoboken talks we have a lovely uh, photographic exhibit uh the, the title of it is cavemen built my skateboard a uh, wonderful young photographer named joan michelle and that's up here for for a while yet and uh that's it we love you thanks for tuning in and join, join us again next week for Hoboken Talks. Until then, I'm Jack Silbert signing off for the Hoboken Historical Museum. Take care.